Hey, how's it going? So I'm involved in this thing that YouTube is doing called Creators Invade London, where basically over the next few weeks I'm going to be making a series of videos in honor of the upcoming Olympic Games. Whoa! Olympics! I am on Team Super Jackal Hawk Tiger Explosion, headed up by the fantastic and fantastically handsome Mr. Wheezy Waiter. So if you want to check out a bunch more awesome videos about London and the Olympics by a bunch of cool people, there will be a ton over the next six weeks. There are links in the thing, and also there will be an annotation thingy at the end of this video. Good, let's go! And what better way to kick off the Olympic season than going back to the original original Olympic Games in Ancient Greece. Let's go back. Unfortunately, Ancient Greek history is always really difficult to figure out because Greek historians didn't separate mythology from history, so there's a lot of different stories about how the Olympics got their start. But my favorite among them is that Heracles, or as you might know him, Hercules, founded the games to honor Daddy Zeus. Fun fact, the Olympic Games were originally called the Herea Games and were actually just a series of races among women to determine who the new priestess of Hera would be in the town of Olympia. But then, as is often the case in history, the men were like dibs, and by the first official Olympic Games, some Sometime around 776 BCE, women were not allowed to compete or attend, punishable by death. History kind of sucks for women. Sorry. Now, there were lots of different athletic competitions throughout ancient Greece, but the Olympic Games quickly became the most prominent, drawing in huge crowds and tons of important people, including Pythagoras, Sophocles, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. It was a pretty good group. Perhaps the most characteristic events of the ancient games were the myriad of foot races of various distances. However, one event that was conspicuously missing is the marathon. There was no marathon in the ancient Olympic Games. That was something that came about millennia later when the Olympics were revived. Now, I had always been told that the distance of the marathon, 42.195 kilometers, stemmed from the Battle of Marathon. The story goes that after the Greek victory over the Persians at the Battle of Marathon, a soldier named Pheidippides ran all the way back to Athens to alert them of the victory before dropping dead from exhaustion. So yeah, apparently that's just a bunch of crap. It turns out the distance of the Marathon has nothing to do with Greece. That was just the distance between Windsor Castle and the Royal Box at an early London Olympics. Lame. Luckily, even without the Marathon, the ancient Olympics had a bunch of cool events including armor races, chariot races, boxing, wrestling, and an awesome event called Pancration. The idea for Pancration stems from the epic story of Heracles fighting the Nemean lion where he actually had to choke the lion to death. Yeah, you don't remember that from the movie. Pancration was essentially a form of mixed martial arts with only two rules. You weren't allowed to gouge your enemy's eyes out or bite them. And while it wasn't required to kill your opponent to win, it did happen. There's a good story of a fighter named Arhikion, whose name I've just butchered, who was in a fight. His opponent was choking him and he was desperate to break the hold. He grabbed his opponent's foot and broke his ankle, forcing his opponent to surrender, and Arhikion was named the winner. One small problem, Arhikion was dead. They gave him the crown anyway. And for almost all of these events, athletes competed in the nude, which besides being kind of funny, is actually pretty cool. So whether you were a king, a nobleman, or a commoner, at the games, they were all the same. Because when you strip off all the layers we hide ourselves in, that's what we are. The same. And that's what the Olympics are all about. I'll see you next time.